Anorexia changed my life. In the depths of my bulimia, I'd binge and purge four or five times a day. I'd avoid social contact if it involved eating. Eating disorders are a serious mental illness. They can affect anyone of any age, gender or background at any time. I understand just how debilitating and life-threatening an eating disorder can be. Having my own personal experience of dealing with anorexia throughout my life. But they're treatable and recovery is possible. So that's why I'm here to tell you about the charity BEAT that supports anyone affected by an eating disorder throughout the UK. Without specialist care and support, recovery can be difficult, as it was for Mel. Her loving parents, Robert and Jane, know just how devastating an eating disorder can be. She was very gregarious, had lots of friends. She loved school. But then at age 13, you used to notice that Mel would try and leave a little bit of food or a little bit more food each day. And anything you said would stop her eating completely. And that's where I saw the face, which was completely blank. It's like a wall. That was when we knew that she had anorexia. Jane and Robert sought medical help for Mel, who went on to become a doctor. But her eating disorder gradually became worse. Working as a doctor, she struggled. She struggled every single day. So I went and lived with Mel in her flat for 20 months. She was losing weight. It took her so long to eat anything. She telephoned me and said, Mum, I don't feel so good. The next day, I tried to contact Mel. She did not answer her phone. So we got into the car and travelled down to London to break into the flat. And I went into the bedroom and it was something we had dreaded. Tragically, Mel had died of heart failure caused by her anorexia. Beat needs more money to help more people, to help those around them. Please prevent someone else going through what we're going through and we'll go through for the rest of our lives. Anorexia nervosa has the highest mortality rate of any mental illness. Treatment and support can't always be guaranteed to help, but the sooner it's administered, the more likely the chance of a full recovery. That's why BEAT offers a dedicated helpline and one-to-one -one web chat all year round. So whatever the problem might be, help is always on hand. There are common misconceptions that eating disorders um, are just anorexia or bulimia, whereas we can support people with any other eating disorders or behaviours around food and have practical steps and manageable goals towards recovery. B estimates around one and a quarter million people in the UK live with an eating disorder, but when you include their family and friends, around five million people are also affected. It's why B also set up and run a support network giving carers the chance to speak to someone else who's been in their position. Teresa has been a carer for her daughter, Nia, who's had an eating disorder since she was 15. She was very sociable with uh, her group of girlfriends at primary school. She was quite the hub of it all. I remember going to high school and I think I started to feel less secure in myself. I noticed her dramatic loss of weight. And also then I think I started to observe the control she'd put around what she was eating. It never felt a conscious thing for me, but I just remember eating less and somehow that made me feel better. I was physically really underweight and it morphed into, into bulimia. Then I got a bit lost in trying to do things that would encourage Nia to eat. The eating disorder had us all in its grips. Mum was a big part of trying to help me get well and um, it got to a point where she kind of said, I can't do this anymore and I reached out for a support group who actually had other carers in it that relate to me directly and that was the beginning I'd say of my journey to start doing things differently. Mum changed her attitude from, from trying to do everything for me and that helped me get to a point where I decided that I wanted to get better for myself. She has worked so hard. We have a really strong bond and we love each other dearly but it is incredible what she's managed to do. 
Oh, they smell nice. Thank you. I got really lost in my teenage years and kind of feel like I'm back on the right track again. Teresa now volunteers in a parent-to-parent -parent support group for BEAT. The support group was the most instrumental thing in giving me hope. So I feel like I'm giving back what was given to me and I'm able to do just the same for somebody else, which, you know, is very rewarding. It's not known exactly what causes eating disorders, but it's thought they include a mix of genetic, biological and cultural factors. And although they do predominantly affect women, studies suggest that up to 25% of cases are men. Tom lives near Newcastle-upon-Tyne, and after starting college at 16, began to notice a change in his behaviour. It was a really great going to college. I started going to the gym and started doing a bit of exercise and, and things were looking really good. I was getting a bit of muscle and I felt really healthy. I felt great in myself. But there was a lot of change. My granddad had cancer for 10 years and it was coming to the end of his life. I think grief's a very hard emotion and sport was a way of kind of getting out that feelings of grief. It became very obsessive. I was also doing a lot in secret. And on top of that, I, I was also under eating massively. Um, I became more and more isolated. I was talking less and less. I wanted to be alone. It got to a point where I was hospitalized, diagnosed with anorexia nervosa. Now Tom's in recovery, and I'm checking in with him for the first time to see how he's getting on. Hello, Tom. Oh. Do you regard yourself now as being in recovery? Yes, I would say I was, yeah. It's been about four or five years where I've, I've lived really quite healthy and I'm doing really well, but I think this, this illness is always up and down. Have you used Beats Helpline, Tom? I've used it a few times and great way of kind of talking to somebody and, and kind of getting that help and support and then dark, dark hours when you just feel like sometimes you can't. It was very difficult for me and I felt huge anxiety because I didn't feel it made me appear very male or macho. Is that still the case? It obviously is a stigma having an eating disorder, but then there's like a double stigma with the male. I feel like speaking is, is my way forward, is my way of kind of expressing myself in all different ways. And I'm really grateful personally that you've spoken to me about it because it makes me feel better. So I just want to say a personal thank you. Thank you very much. Like. <laughs> The charity BEAT exists to provide support and information for anyone living with an eating disorder and those caring for them. They urgently need your donations so they can continue to provide and expand their support services. So please give as generously as you can. To make a donation online, please go to the website beateatingdisorders.org.uk forward slash donate. If you want to donate by phone, then call 01603 753 308, Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Or if you'd like to post a donation, please make your cheque payable to BEAT and send it to BEAT 1 Chalk Hill House, 19 Rosary Road, Norwich, NR1 1SZ. And if you want the charity to claim gift aid on your donation, please include an email or postal address so that they can send you a gift aid form. Thank you.